Interstitial lung disease, also known as diffuse parenchymal lung disease, is a group of lung diseases affecting the interstitium. It concerns alveolar epithelium, pulmonary capillary endothelium, basement membrane, perivascular and perilymphatic tissues. The term ILD is used to distinguish these diseases from obstructive airways diseases. Prolonged ILD may result in pulmonary fibrosis, but this is not always the case. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is interstitial lung disease for which no obvious cause can be identified, and is associated with typical radiographic and pathologic findings. Causes ILD may be classified according to the cause. One method of classification is as follows. Inhaled substances in organic silicosis asbestosis spiriliosis organic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Drug-induced antibiotics chemotherapeutic drugs antiarrhythmic agents statins. Connective tissue disease systemic sclerosis polymyositis dermatomyositis systemic lupus erythematosus rheumatoid arthritis. Infection atypical pneumonia pneumocystis pneumonia tuberculosis chlamydia trachomatis respiratory syncytial virus idiopathic sarcoidosis idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis Hammann-Rich syndrome antisynthetase syndrome malignancy lymphangitic carcinomatosis diagnosis investigation is tailored towards the symptoms and signs a proper and detailed history looking for the occupational exposures, and for signs of conditions listed above is the first and probably the most important part of the workup in patients with interstitial lung disease. Pulmonary function tests usually show a restrictive defect with decreased diffusion capacity. A lung biopsy is required if the clinical history and imaging are not clearly suggestive of a specific diagnosis or malignancy cannot otherwise be ruled out. In cases where a lung biopsy is indicated, a transbronchial biopsy is usually unhelpful, and a surgical lung biopsy is often required. X-rays chest radiography is usually the first test to detect interstitial lung diseases but the chest radiograph can be normal in up to 10% of patients, especially early on the disease process. High-resolution CT of the chest is the preferred modality, and differs from routine CT of the chest. Conventional CT chest examines 7 to 10 mm slices obtained at 10 mm intervals. High-resolution CT examines 1 to 1.5 mm slices at 10 mm intervals using a high spatial frequency reconstruction algorithm. The HRCT therefore provides approximately 10 times more resolution than the conventional CT chest allowing the HRCT to elicit details that cannot otherwise be visualized. Radiologic appearance alone, however, is not adequate and should be interpreted in the clinical context, keeping in mind the temporal profile of the disease process. Interstitial lung diseases can be classified according to radiologic patterns pattern of opacities consolidation acute alveolar hemorrhage syndromes acute eosinophilic pneumonia acute interstitial pneumonia cryptogenic organizing pneumonia chronic chronic eosinophilic pneumonia cryptogenic organizing pneumonia lymphoproliferative disorders pulmonary alveolar proteinosis sarcoidosis linear or reticular opacities acute, pulmonary edema chronic, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, connective tissue associated interstitial lung diseases, asbestosis, sarcoidosis, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, drug-induced lung disease small nodules acute, hypersensitivity pneumonitis chronic, Hypersensitivity pneumonitis, sarcoidosis, silicosis, coal workers pneumoconeurosis, respiratory bronchiolitis, alveolar microlithiasis, cystic hair spaces chronic, pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis, pulmonary lymphangiomyomatosis, 
honeycomb lung caused by IPF or other diseases ground glass opacities acute, alveolar hemorrhage syndromes, pulmonary edema, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, acute inhalational exposures, drug-induced lung diseases, acute interstitial pneumonia chronic, non-specific interstitial pneumonia, respiratory bronchiolitis associated interstitial lung disease, disquamative interstitial pneumonia, drug-induced lung diseases, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis thickened alveolar septa acute, pulmonary edema chronic, lymphangitic carcinomatosis, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, sarcoidosis, Pulmonary veno-occlusive disease distribution upper lung predominance pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis, silicosis, coal workers pneumoconeurosis, carmustine related pulmonary fibrosis, respiratory bronchiolitis associated with interstitial lung disease. Lower lung predominance idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis associated with connective tissue diseases, asbestosis, chronic aspiration, central predominance sarcoidosis, beryliosis, peripheral predominance idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, cryptogenic organizing pneumonia associated findings pleural effusion or thickening pulmonary edema, connective tissue diseases, asbestosis, lymphangitic carcinomatosis, lymphoma, lymphangiomyomatosis, drug-induced lung diseases, lymphadenopathy, sarcoidosis, silicosis, beryliosis, lymphangitic carcinomatosis, lymphoma, lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia treatment. ILD is not a single disease, but encompasses many different pathological processes. Hence treatment is different for each disease. If a specific occupational exposure cause is found, the person should avoid that environment. If a drug cause is suspected, that drug should be discontinued. Many cases due to unknown or connective tissue-based causes are treated with corticosteroids, such as prednisolone. Some people respond to immunosuppressant treatment. Patients with a low level of oxygen in the blood may be given supplemental oxygen. Pulmonary rehabilitation appears to be useful. Lung transplantation is an option if the ILD progresses despite therapy in appropriately selected patients with no other contraindications. On October 16, 2014, the Food and Drug Administration approved a new drug for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This drug, OFEV, is marketed by Beringer Ingelheim Pharmaceuticals, Inc. This drug has been shown to slow the decline of lung function although the drug has not been shown to reduce mortality or improve lung function. The estimated cost of the drug per year is approximately $94,000.